Environmental science is the interdisciplinary academic field of study that examines interactions among natural systems and human systems. Environmental science draws on physics, chemistry, and biology. It combines the natural environment and considers environmental problems caused by humans. Every time you or I use a resource such as food, water, energy, or materials, we are interacting with environmental systems. A system is any set of interacting components that influence one another by exchanging energy or materials. Systems can be at different scales, such as the subway system in a city, versus an ecosystem in the Amazon rainforest, versus the global system. Environmental science is different from environmental studies and from environmentalism. Environmental studies is a broader field under which environmental science falls. Environmental studies also encompasses subjects such as environmental policy, economics, literature, and ethics. Environmentalism is a social movement that seeks to protect the environment through lobbying, activism, and education. In this course, we will examine natural world systems and gain an appreciation for how human activities impact those systems. Ultimately, we want to know if our activities are sustainable, meaning are we living on Earth and using resources in a way that will allow future generations to do so with roughly the same standard of living. Why is environmental science important? Many environmental scientists investigate whether the planet's natural life support systems are being degraded by human-induced changes. To help answer this question, environmental scientists often monitor natural systems for signs of stress or evidence of disturbance. Here is one important concept to consider. Natural environments provide something called ecosystem services. Ecosystem services are functions that the natural environment provides that are important to human life. Clean water, clean air, fish and food crops are the result of ecosystem services. If we degrade or destroy our natural systems, we may very well impair their ability to provide ecosystem services. We often do not fully appreciate ecosystem services until humans have degraded them and we see the result. In order to understand human impacts on the natural world, environmental scientists attempt to evaluate the status of ecosystem services. One way to do this is to use environmental indicators to evaluate the health of the natural environment. Just as a physician might take your temperature, heart rate, or respiration rate as an indicator of the health of your body, a human system, environmental scientists use measures such as carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere as an indicator of the health of the natural environment. Environmental science is a multidisciplinary academic field that integrates physical, biological, and information sciences to the study of the environment and the solution of environmental problems. Environmental science emerged from the fields of natural history and medicine during the Enlightenment. Today it provides an integrated, quantitative, and interdisciplinary approach to the study of environmental systems. Related areas of study include environmental studies and environmental engineering. Environmental studies incorporates more of the social sciences for understanding human relationships, perceptions, and policies towards the environment. Environmental engineering focuses on design and technology for improving environmental quality in every aspect. Environmental scientists work on subjects like the understanding of earth processes, evaluating alternative energy systems, pollution control and mitigation, natural resource management, and the effects of global climate change. Environmental issues almost always include an interaction of physical, chemical, and biological processes. Environmental scientists bring a systems approach to the analysis of environmental problems. Key elements of an effective environmental scientist include the ability to relate space and time relationships as well as quantitative analysis. Environmental science came alive as a substantive, active field of scientific investigation. 
in the 1960s and 1970s driven by the need for a multidisciplinary approach to analyze complex environmental problems, the arrival of substantive environmental laws requiring specific environmental protocols of investigation, and the growing public awareness of a need for action in addressing environmental problems. Events that spurred this development included the publication of Rachel Carson's landmark environmental book Silent Spring, along with major environmental issues becoming very public, such as the 1969 Santa Barbara oil spill and the Cuyahoga River of Cleveland, Ohio, catching fire, and helped increase the visibility of environmental issues and create this new field of study. Thank you for watching. For more educational videos, please subscribe to WizScience on YouTube or visit wizscience.com. Kia ora, my name is Mahina Rangi Baker. I'm an environmental consultant and a kaitiaki, and I work predominantly for Te Atiawa Ki Whakarongotai, which is my iwi here in Waikanae. Working as a kaitiaki is someone who protects the environment on behalf of our people requires you to be a bit of a jack of all trades. In any given week, I could be working with freshwater scientists, stormwater engineers, planners at council, people who actually do construction on the ground. I think that's potentially one of the most challenging aspects of this work but it's also quite rewarding because it means that we have a really integrated overview of all the things that are going on in our region. If I sit down with a freshwater scientist they may not actually be aware that their colleague who works in stormwater is actually doing some sort of works further down the river and I find that it's helpful that we can bring that more integrated approach to things where we have a general understanding of what's going on in all sorts of spaces within the environment. What drew me into doing this sort of work, when I was a teenager, our iwi here asked for young people to assist with Kiwi translocations from Kapiti Island. So I went over to the island to help catch Kiwi to send to other islands and I think in that process of handling Kiwi and spending time with our native birds and our taonga, I really grew an appreciation for how special they are and wanted to work in a space where I could help protect them and that then directed me to take a lot of science classes in high school and then to do a, a degree in ecology. I applied for a lot of scholarships when I was at university and one of the scholarships I had provided me with a work placement and it was a very scientific role. Working in a lab looking at the effects of pesticides on bee communities. So it was very technical, not in the field, but I think having that grounding in hard science is very helpful. Some of the projects that I'm working on at the moment are responding to applications by either council or private developers where they want to build a new development or to do some sort of work in a river or in a stream that's going to have an effect on the environment. And we provide input into a management plan that may have some sort of impact on fresh water. Typically the way that people think about effects to fresh water are chemical or biological, so it might look at the chemistry of the water, the water quality, the ecology of the river catchment. A Māori approach will look at those things, but it will also consider um, what are the effects to the cultural heritage of that river, because for us landscape is really imbued with historical and cultural meaning what's the effect spiritually, and not just spiritually to the people, but to the peaceful and calm quality that water and rivers often have. What are the social effects? So can our people still go down and eat from the river? 
do we see our traditional foods being put on our marae? Are we able to serve food to people? Those types of considerations, I think Māori are able to bring that fuller picture and what we find is that those values in one way are specifically Māori but non-Māori can relate to that too. The job requires me to consult widely with our iwi to maintain really good relationships, in particular with our kaumātua or our elderly community. That's something I've been encouraged to do since I was quite young. But certainly anyone getting into this work, I encourage them to participate and be active within their own iwi because whilst our job there's a lot of reading and writing. Our responsibility is that we're accurately reflecting the values that our people hold. For people looking to do this type of work, the starting point is with the iwi itself. That being said, within the mainstream sector, within ministries and council, there's also a huge demand for people who not only have a background in environmental science but particularly if they have familiarity with the Māori world or with Māori knowledge, there's a huge demand for people with those skills. Environmental science is an interdisciplinary academic field that integrates physical, biological and information sciences, including ecology, biology, physics, chemistry, zoology, mineralogy, oceanology, limnology, soil science, geology, atmospheric science, and geodesy, to the study of the environment, and the solution of environmental problems. Environmental science emerged from the fields of natural history and medicine during the Enlightenment. Today it provides an integrated, quantitative, and interdisciplinary approach to the study of environmental systems. Related areas of study include environmental studies and environmental engineering. Environmental studies incorporates more of the social sciences for understanding human relationships, perceptions and policies towards the environment. Environmental engineering focuses on design and technology for improving environmental quality in every aspect. Environmental scientists work on subjects like the understanding of earth processes, evaluating alternative energy systems, pollution control and mitigation, natural resource management, and the effects of global climate change. Environmental issues almost always include an interaction of physical, chemical, and biological processes. Environmental scientists bring a systems approach to the analysis of environmental problems. Key elements of an effective environmental scientist include the ability to relate space and time relationships as well as quantitative analysis. Environmental science came alive as a substantive, active field of scientific investigation in the 1960s and 1970s driven by a the need for a multidisciplinary approach to analyze complex environmental problems, b the arrival of substantive environmental laws requiring specific environmental protocols of investigation and c the growing public awareness of a need for action in addressing environmental problems. Events that spurred this development included the publication of Rachel Carson's landmark environmental book Silent Spring along with major environmental issues becoming very public, such as the 1969 Santa Barbara oil spill, and the Cuyahoga River of Cleveland, Ohio, catching fire, also in 1969, and helped increase the visibility of environmental issues and create this new field of study. What is environmental health science and why is it important? Imagine you have a caramel apple. Let's make it a peanut coated caramel apple. Now, imagine all the ways that apple might cause harm to someone. 
The peanuts, for instance, could trigger an allergic reaction. Sugar in the caramel could increase your chances of developing diabetes or heart disease. Are the preservatives and other additives in the coating safe? Does the apple contain traces of pesticides? And were the farmers and neighbours exposed to these pesticides as the apple was being grown? Then there's the packaging the apple came in. Does it contain harmful chemicals? And did some of these get into the apple? Was anyone exposed to dangerous stuff while the packaging was being made? And for the paranoid, did the production of this caramel apple contribute to global warming and as a result increase the level of health risks around the world? On the flip side though, this caramel apple is dripping with carbohydrates and proteins and vitamins and other nutrients that your body needs. And it's not just about you. People's livelihoods and as a result their health could well depend on you eating that apple. So, should you eat the apple? Without some way of making sense of the speculation about the risks and benefits, the only thing you're likely to get is a headache. The good news is that there's help at hand. It's called environmental health science. By understanding the science behind how our environment affects our health, we can take some of the guesswork out of the decisions we make. This is incredibly important if you're procrastinating over biting into an enticing caramel apple. But it also has some bearing on one or two other issues, like how can we develop safer products? How can we curb the rise of lifestyle diseases? Or how can we benefit from the gains of technological progress without suffering the pain of unintended health impacts? And as a bonus, the science of what happens at the intersection between our bodies and the environment we live in is pretty cool, although I could be biased on that front. Environmental health science, reducing risk and increasing benefits so everyone can lead a healthier life.